Um, and okay, so I want to talk about years after. Um, so what are some things that can crop up that you have seen um, with your clients or your patients? What can crop up, you know, whether they did or they did not do the scar massage? Mm -hmm. What are some signs and symptoms that something isn't quite right? Yeah, we've seen, you know, everything under the sun in terms of, you know, often it's these light bulb moments where people are like, they won't, sometimes they don't even bring up the fact that they had a C-section and they're coming in for all different other kinds of things. And then when we actually assess them, we'll see the scar and we'll be like, oh, you didn't mention this. And we'll be like, oh yeah, it was, you know, 20 years ago. So it can range from anything like um, back pain, for instance, okay. to urinary incontinence. Mm -hmm. Um, so again, what can sometimes happen is, again, we think about those layers of tissue, the layers of fascia that is all affected. Mm -hmm. It could be accompanied with sometimes like weight loss or weight gain, where again, that's creating different forces on that scar because that scar may not have given the person an issue mm -hmm. until, you know, when they've lost 20 pounds and then now the forces on that scar are going to play a different role, right? right? Those forces that are kind of coming through the, the uterine wall where the bladder sits, like, um, people often don't see that everything truly is connected. Right. So often when we see, you know, issues later on, it can be accompanied with, you know, weight loss, weight gain, mm -hmm. um, it could be urinary incontinence, it could be pelvic organ prolapse, it could be right. back pain. Um, wow. Urgency and frequency is probably the number one thing that we see that can be related. Because again, if, if again, you're not familiar with the anatomy, um, you have your uterus that kind of sits in the middle here, you have your bladder that sits in the front. And again, that scar kind of comes right through, like this is the front of my body here, that scar is coming right through down to the uterus, things are being stitched, 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 stitch. and again, that can put some other pressures on that bladder and that can create often urgency and frequency. Right. I and have true. I have yeah, stories ahead. of other physios telling that, telling us that years and years and years pass. And then that web of, you know, tissue kind of pulls on some of the organs. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And again, just for a personal experience here, having gone through a C-section myself, you know, 13 months ago, that was probably the number one thing that I noticed myself postpartum. Like I did, luckily I didn't have, you know, incontinence or anything postpartum, mm -hmm. but I definitely like, usually I could hold my pee a lot better. And I was definitely getting a lot more urgency and frequency postpartum. And like, I knew for myself being a pelvic physio, like I kind of, I knew that some of that did have to do with that, you know, that scar and right. probably some of the adhesions and some of the, the, the surgical procedure that happened. So, right. Right. Yeah. So can you show us and lead us through what uh, a scar massage will look like? So what you can, again, first of all, you might just want to start with like a little bit of, again, light touching in that area, back and forth, up and down. You might even just try like a little bit of up and down sensation. You can see I'm not, I'm really lightly just sinking into my skin right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm not necessarily like pushing. Okay? Right. I would probably do this lying down because right now being in an upright position, like my abs are on because it needs to help me hold up. So I would definitely do it in a relaxed position. And then what I might try to do is just a little bit of like nudging the tissue almost. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of pushing down onto that scar. If I have an adhesion and you can kind of see like there, you can see the skin doesn't quite move as well in this area. Okay. Whereas in this area, it kind of sinks in a little bit more. So I'm just kind of paying attention to that as I kind of sink around that scar. And I might just move up and down and just kind of make sure. Often people will only focus on the above section, but we also want to make sure we're getting under that scar as well. Can you see that okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. From there, I could actually try a little bit of circles. So I might sink into that scar mm -hmm. and just try some circles around. Right. And again, I'm trying to just get that skin moving. I'm feeling for any of those nodules that you described to mm -hmm. see, again, what does it feel like? And really, before you even do any of this, I'm going to put my face back in the camera for a second. The scar massage should never, ever, ever feel painful. Mm -hmm. So you may feel that it pulls a little bit. You may feel that, you know, a little bit squeamish, that it feels weird. 
and that's all okay, but it should never feel painful. Right. Okay. Um, if you're noticing that it's like getting, like it feels like it's going to open. If you're noticing any like red spots in the area, it's getting really irritated. That's too much. And I would back off. Okay. So we did a little bit of touching. We did some circles. Some of the other things, again, the, I'm going kind of from easiest to more advanced here. You could also try a little bit of like um, hugging the tissue almost like you're coming through that scar and, and going through there. You could go vertically up through that scar. You could go across. And again, remember we want everything to be movable in all different directions. And right, right now, again, if I'm early days, I'm not putting a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. If I was further along and everything on the outside felt like it was moving pretty well, then I may feel a little bit more comfortable to sink in a little bit more. But again, you're going based on your comfort level, right? And what things feel like. So you're one. Uh, you're one year postpartum, right? Or not quite. I am what uh, thirteen months. Right. Postpartum. Okay. So are you spending in that time in that area that you showed us, where it's a little bit more challenging to get movement? Are you spending more of your time in that area? In general, yes. Right. Again, though, that's the area that probably needs a little bit more love. Mm -hmm. um, in lots of cases, it's the midline area because in some cases, the surgeon will actually cut upwards. And even though you don't see it on the outside, right. sometimes to create a little bit more space, they'll actually do an incision up through the midline. Okay. So then there can be some extra stitches in those deeper layers. So again, right. maybe not on my shirt or my jacket, right. but in my undershirt on the inside is where there's been some extra stitching. Ah, Sometimes okay. it's off on the sides. So in some, some cases it's kind of off like out towards the hip bone here. Okay. And that's where people will feel a little bit more nodgly. Right. And again, often it's because the surgeon needs to adhere those stitches down. Mm, right. Um, when they're, when they're doing their surgery. Right. And is there a kind of like a, how many minutes should a mom be doing this a day or should they be doing it every day, you know, three times a week, or is there, you know, kind of just like, however it feels good to you. It really depends. It depends again on those goals as well. Mm -hmm. um, so as a physio, we're kind of prescribing things depending on someone's goals, depending on, you know, when I'm assessing the tissue, what does the tissue look like? What does the tissue feel like? Um, so Again, there's no number, unfortunately. <laughs> right. We all wish there was. Right? I know, right? <laughs> Got you. Okay. Um, and, um, oh, I forgot to ask. When you are massaging, should you be using oil or anything? Just, you know, dry fingers? What, what should we be using? Again, depending on what the skin is like, what's going to be most comfortable, though, is definitely like a, a lotion and oil mm -hmm. of some sort. Right. Sometimes I'll have people, again, if they're just in the shower, washing the rest of their body, mm -hmm. spend a little bit of extra time just around that C-section area. If you're moisturizing your body, again, spend a little bit of time. We often don't think about maybe moisturizing our stomach, right. but it's a nice way as we're doing our arms and the rest of our body gives that area a little bit of love too, because right. it needs it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great one. I think that's easy, right? It's easier, it's slippery, easier. you got some soap. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And you don't need to necessarily then find the time to get it in either because you're already doing it with, I mean, as a mom, I don't know how much we're spending <laughs> lotioning our bodies and whatnot, but if you are. Well, if you can see stay. how flaky my skin is. <laughs> you got some sun this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs>